Welcome to the Northeast Kingdom Voice. I'm your host, Scott Wheeler. Today's guest is Northeast Kingdom native, Sonny Naughton, who last year returned from almost a decade in New York City. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me today, Scott. You know, I think some of my earliest memories of you, you used to perform a lot in local theater, didn't you? Yes. If mm -hmm. I recall right, I, uh, you won Fourth of July Parade, you were working the sidelines, if I recall. But you're, and I, weren't you always happy? Um, always yes, bubbly? I, I would say that my name pretty much usually uh, matches my personality. I try very much to be positive and optimistic. And I'm sure the parade was, I was with all my friends and it right. was exciting, right? So um, is Sunny your real name or nickname? Sunny is my given name. Um, right. I have an older sister whose name is Star. Right. Our mom moved up here in the 70s, so she had a little bit of hippie in her, I think. Right. So, uh, so you grew up yeah. here. Now, where did you grow up? I grew up right um, in Newport, right, right near the high school. Right. Um, my dad is from Boston and my mom is from New York, but they met here um, actually at the Newport Daily Express right. and fell in love and then raised me and my um, older sister here. Right. And so what did you think when you were growing up here? You know, what did you think about the region? Um, I, I mean, I, I, it's lovely, and that's obviously why I returned. Um, we traveled a lot to New York, mm -hmm. and um, I thought that was exciting. But I can honestly say that everyone that knows me knows I had a wonderful time growing up here. I had so much exposure to theater, mm -hmm. um, and I had a wonderful high school experience at North Country. I really think that I left because I wanted to work on Broadway. I wanted to live in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. and. That was my dream and that was my goal. And you can't work on Broadway here, right? right. Broadway's in Times Square in New York City, so that's right. why I left. So did you ever think you would return? No, never, ever, ever, ever. What were, what were, your, what were you thinking when you left? I believed and, and did everything in my power and in my, in my dreaming to live and work um, in New York and really in the theater business, in the entertainment business, I wanted to be making my income from um, initially musical theater and singing and dancing, but um, in my 20s that changed and I ended up moving behind the scenes, which was also probably almost a little more exciting to sort of be helping put um, projects together. Um, and I never, I never thought that I would not enjoy that process any longer. And I definitely um, wasn't sure that I would find a fulfilling job if I came back to Vermont. You know, my family isn't here. I just have my parents. However, the longer that I spent time in New York, I realized I did have family here in this community. Mm -hmm. And the people that grew up supporting me and telling me to go fly away, mm -hmm. see what you can do. Um, I really have to say that while I do have good friends I made in New York, I really missed a lot of people here, and mm -hmm. I missed the small town, and I missed going to the grocery store and seeing people, and um, it really started to change my view and my values. Mm -hmm. And when my values started shifting, that's when I thought it might be time to try something else, right. and I ended up back here. You know, you, you sound a bit like my daughter, even though her, her journey wasn't quite as long, because out of my my two boys yep. who never returned uh, to Vermont because they went to college in Maine mm -hmm. and they met women from Maine and they're both married and they will never return. Sure. Uh, but just because of the family connections with their wives. But then my daughter, she was the wanderlust. She's been to Europe. She lived in Australia. She went to college, graduated from college at UMaine. But we really didn't envision her coming back here. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is after she's traveled and that, she uh, she moved back. She's married and mm -hmm. expecting a baby. That's and wonderful. She, she was the one who we really didn't think. But she mm -hmm. she saw the world, saw the good and bad, and uh, then she's here. She still likes to travel, but she's yep. uh, she lives in Johnson, and mm -hmm. so just 45 minutes away. Yeah, well, I can definitely relate to that. Um, I traveled for work quite a bit when I was a performer. So I first moved to Oops. New York, and when I was performing, I performed in Texas. I did regional theater right mm. around New York. I performed in Manhattan. And then I probably got my most exciting acting job, which was the national tour of Annie. Mm -hmm. And that took me to over 96 cities in the United States and Canada. 
And were you Annie? Um, I never played Annie. I did understudy the kids, but um, Annie always has to be a, a child. But I was, um, because of my height, I'm 4'10", um, I played the understudy for the orphans and then took care of them backstage. And so I traveled around the country with 65 people. Um, we lived in hotels, mm -hmm. we were in buses, and uh, you know, I have to say that um, I really realized how beautiful Vermont was. Mm -hmm. I really didn't have much exposure to the whole country before that. I had traveled a bit, but we really went from Vermont to New York City. Um, and, you know, I just had never seen these like all of these places, I mean, everywhere was so amazing to me. I really did like North Carolina. I thought that mm -hmm. was beautiful. And I liked Washington, D.C. I felt comfortable there like I had felt in New York. Mm -hmm. But um, after that, I really started feeling like, you know, I wasn't sure where my actual place in the world was, but at the time, New York City was still the location for me because of the business that I was working in. So um, I definitely can relate to your daughter traveling and then sort of being able to come back to Vermont and relax sort of and know that you've right. seen things and, and sort of decide where do you want to sort of put your roots and for she and I, our roots are already here. Right. And with my wife and I, we stayed here, but we love we love the travel. Mm -hmm. And this is a weird thing to say: is there's some people who say the Northeast Kingdom is the most beautiful place in the world. Well, myself, I find beauty in almost any place I mm -hmm. go. Uh, sure. Like the Rocky Mountains, uh, that's beautiful. In the Great Plains is beautiful in a in a different way. Ah. Or a you know going through a city like where you used to yep. live, the skyscrapers. Yes. There's and the there, lights. Right. There's just different kinds. I find beauty in almost every place I go. Yeah, I would agree. I think that um, that for me, it's about a feeling. Mm -hmm. And when I first moved to New York, I had you know since I was nine years old, so for over ten years, I had wanted to feel that excitement and feel fulfilled and being mm -hmm. able to work in a business that I had prepared for and had, you know, in the summers I would do a lot of theater here. I did theater with Q&EK, mm -hmm. with Vermont Family Theater. Derby Stock was where I made my um, debut oh, yeah. in Annie. Um, and in the summers I would travel to New York and I really, I felt that New York was, you know, where I belonged, so to speak. Um, however, once I had the experience of traveling around the world for work, I, I started to get the sense that where you belong is, is really inside of you and what you find wherever you are. And that was when my feelings about living in New York and being in that business sort of shifted. And that was when I made the change to go behind the scenes and not be on stage any longer. Because the honest truth is, you have to love being on stage more than anything else. It's a difficult business. There's not a lot of money in it for, I would say, probably like a large percentage of the people mm -hmm. that are performers. And I had the opportunity to see other people I was sharing the stage with that I knew loved being on that stage and playing characters far more than I ever had. And that doesn't mean that we didn't put the same effort into it. It just meant that maybe there was something else out there for me, and I just didn't know where it was. And it took me a lot of years to sort of decide what is it about theater that drew me to theater. Mm -hmm. And I sort of came to the understanding that I was happy when I did theater. You started this asking me about, am I a happy person? Did I have fun at that parade? I had a blast growing up here. My best friends did shows with me. I just loved going to rehearsal every night. I loved dance company mm. at the high school. Like it was just like life was amazing. Mm. But when I took picked that up and transfer, transferred it to what life as an actress and in the business in New York City was going to be for me, I no longer could see a future for myself that was exciting. It was mm. difficult. It was trying. It was it was hard, and the difficulties that went along with it didn't seem worth it to me anymore. Right. Well, you sound so much like a person I recently interviewed when I was in Nashville. Uh -huh. Is Annie Mosier, yes. whose mm -hmm. uh, parents are Howard and Phyllis Mosier of Irisburg, yes. and she talked about some of the same things that you went through of trying, because like she talks about, she's been in Nashville for about 20 years as That's a, a singer-songwriter, yeah. and she talked about the first several years, you're just kind of like feeling the water, you're even trying to figure out who you are, yeah. because once, once you, you know, back up here in the Northeast Kingdom, you're like amazing, and you stand out, but she said in Nashville, when you go there, it's like, wow, 
everybody's oh, amazing yes. and yep. you probably and I, I think you're saying experienced that you ran into the same thing yeah and I think you know there are so many opportunities you know a project that I worked on when I was working on producing events was the National High School Musical Theater Awards mm -hmm. and that is a newer program that brings kids from all around the country and there's a big process to be involved however it's basically the Tony Awards for teenagers mm -hmm. and it's I think in its sixth or seventh year now and um, I worked on it from the beginning and I, I saw now I'm older and I'm not performing anymore right and I'm seeing all these kids and, and it's opening my, my eyes even more from when I was at AMDA, the American Musical and Dramatic Academy studying theater. Like there are so many opportunities in this country and around the world for theater. And we are very lucky in the Northeast Kingdom. I mean, there are like three or more theater companies on its own in addition to lots of people who are available. Mm. But it's a big world and you know, yes, there are a lot of other people and you have to know who you are and you have to know what your goals are or you're gonna get lost. Mm -hmm. And I think there are people that sort of peter out or decide that they wanna go have a family back mm -hmm. in Michigan and that's all fine. But for me, I still needed to wake up every day with like a serious passion and I spent time thinking about what I had done when I was an actress and what I did when I became, um, involved in producing events and it was always making people happy um, you know always using my name I guess my personality to bring joy to people's lives and I was able to sort of identify really towards the end when I no longer wanted to live in New York City anymore I'm more than this business I'm more than the dreams I've had my whole mm. life I'm sunny and and I want to find something that I can do to make people happy anywhere that I want to live and I just happened to luck out when I came back to Vermont one year ago. Um, I was planning on going to Montana for the summer. I have a friend that started a theater company and he offered me a job helping him build this mm -hmm. theater company. And I thought, well, at this point still, all I know is theater. So I'm gonna go to Montana for the summer. I'm gonna take the mm -hmm. winter off. I've been pounding the pavement for 12 years. Mm -hmm. Let me have a little break. I never had that college break like everybody mm -hmm. would get in the summer if they went right after high school. And I, attempt at the state building um, for the health department and I happened to fall into a job interview at least for, um, I work for Weber now, which is the Vermont Association of Business, Industry and Rehabilitation and I'm a youth employment specialist and mm -hmm. I work with Voc Rehab mm -hmm. and now every day I get to help kids in the area realize what they want to do after high school and what their dreams are and it's exciting to me because I'm helping them figure out what they want to do when they finish school after I was able to figure that out for myself and then also when I was producing events help kids who wanted to perform in the Macy's Parade mm -hmm. get to perform in the Macy's Parade, kids who wanted to sing at Carnegie Hall, mm -hmm. kids who wanted to go to the Tonys. So I think because I had such an amazing childhood here where everyone in the community was like if you have dreams go out and do these dreams. Mm -hmm. Now I want to be able to give that back to the kids in this community as well because I know what you can do out there right. and I also know what you can do at home. See and I, I think what you're doing is so valuable Thank because you of the fact is you are from here. Mm -hmm. No disrespect to people who move here, but I think you have a connect, because of your connection to mm -hmm. the community, I think you are more credible to the young people because I think no matter, no matter, you know, even generations ago, I think it has been tough for the young people, of especially rural America, to be able to to see the opportunities that mm -hmm. abound out in the world. Sure. And, and I hate to say this, I'll say this because I was born and raised here, I've been mm -hmm. here for generations. We have some people here that it's, it's hard for them to see a vision beyond mm -hmm. their own nose sure. and they don't realize, and, and they don't understand the opportunities that abound out there or that abound right here. Yeah. And I just think there's a, amongst some groups there's in a culture a culture of negativism and and it's because they just they don't understand um you know of just what you can do with your life well i think you know my response to that would to be is that i agree and i think something that really changed my view of the world which <sighs> is so funny 
I, so I didn't go to college right when I left here. Mm -hmm. I went to college for a semester and I didn't like it. I went to Hofstra and it wasn't the right setting for me. So I went to a musical theater conservatory and right. I didn't get a BA. Um, it was just a certificate, right. but I learned what I needed to work, so that's all that really mattered. Um, and then when I started to sort of soul search, really I had like a quarter life crisis, mm -hmm. I decided to go get my degree. I always wanted my degree, um, but I never knew what I wanted it in. I didn't want it in theater. I don't think you need a, a BA to do mm -hmm. theater. So I went to a liberal arts college in downtown, downtown Manhattan, Eugene Lang, right. which is affiliated with the New School, and I had the opportunity then to really, I was in class with all sorts of kids. Most of them were very wealthy, but um, they were from all different areas of the world. And so coupled with the fact that I had just traveled for so many years, and now I'm in, um, I studied journalism and media mm. um, with kids from all different you know, backgrounds, so different from me. I mean, no one else was from a tiny town in New mm. England. Um, it really opened my eyes up and I'm so glad that my path was the way it was. I'm so grateful that I went and did what I wanted to do and came to the education in the way that I did because I really appreciated it and I feel that I learned in a way I wouldn't have learned when I was 18. Mm. At 18, I would have just been trying to get through so I could move to the city. But I guess my point is that I think education is really important and when I was younger and I was living here, I didn't have that feeling. I just wanted to move to the city and see what opportunities were available. So I do feel grateful work for being able to work with these high school students and tell them you don't have to go to college right after high school, but it's take a class at CCV. I mean, there's a program where they offer CCV courses mm -hmm. for free to high school kids. You know, these are things that we need to get out. We need to get the word out about what's available in this community so that kids know what's available right here and then who knows where that will take you. Right, and even, and you know, I took a path that was very similar yet very different from mm -hmm. you uh, is I don't, don't think there's any one path for mm -hmm. people and just because you, you, you move to New York doesn't mean you can't change course. Yep. It's like I was, uh, I have been out of high school I think 31 years, mm -hmm. I've been married for 30 years this mm -hmm. year, my, my kids are going to be 30 this year and I'm yep. not, I, I'm only 50. Uh -huh. so, I had to, I had my kids, then went to college, but then my real experience came myself was, I have four years of college, but it was my years as a reporter, because mm -hmm. I worked in the mental health field, but I, it was my years as a reporter at the Chronicle yep. that my best, you know, I, I owe the Chronicle so much because that's where I really f started figuring things out, and that's mm -hmm. why I'm doing some of the things I do today. Yeah. So if I had just taken, you know, I don't recommend having kids at 18 and 19, mm -hmm. but if I had taken a traditional course, maybe I never would have worked at the Chronicle mm -hmm. for those few years. So you have to make do with the cards that you're dealt and make the best of it. Yes, and I think also, you know, you mentioned you can change your course. Um, when I was 24 and I was really thinking that I didn't want to perform anymore, the honest truth is that I was worried what everyone up here would think. I was worried they would think I failed or that I didn't try hard enough. Um, I wasn't worried what people in the city thought because there were so many people there, but I felt like I owed so much to this community. Mm. And once I sort of let that go and knew that the people that cared about me would care, would care about me if I was Sunny that worked on Broadway or Sunny mm. that lived in Newport, um, I was fine with changing my course. And I've been so grateful with the response that people have had when they see me and they and they say they're happy I've moved home and they're so glad to have me in the community. It's it's like a feeling that I never ever even thought I could have. Mm. A feeling accepted and cared for and, and a part of a community. Every other Saturday afternoon I go to the animal shelter and I'm the cat lady. Mm. And it's so awesome the people that come in that I get to see that, you know, remember me from theater or are just meeting me for the first time. And it really is nice to feel like, you know, I, do, my, I don't have a lot of roots here. My parents did just, you know, moved here because they thought it was a beautiful mm -hmm. place after they had visited and they wanted to have their family here. Um, but for me, I'm making the roots that will be there for future generations mm -hmm. of my family. And I, you know, I can say that I, at this point in time, would never want to live anywhere else. I think it's a great place to be. And, you know, just think, uh, if you hadn't followed your dreams and gone to the city and you had stayed here, 
there's going to be there would be part of you mm -hmm. that would have wondered mm -hmm. and you know there just a couple generations ago you were expected to go into a profession largely and stay in it your entire mm -hmm. life and that isn't really the case anymore people you know things have changed where we're a much more mobile society whether it's moving to new locations or moving within jobs sure. so so um now tell me though there had to have been some negative about like you know in the city everything's there sure but there had to have been some culture shock even though you grew up here yeah oh definitely i mean you mean when i moved to new york but, what but was no, the when you moved back oh when i moved back oh yeah i mean i think honestly that that's probably going to go on forever i don't know uh, you know uh, I'm really colorful. Yeah. I, I can't, you know, I can't hide that. And, um, you know, you can't necessarily wear your red lipstick to Shaw's, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can. I don't always want to. But um, I think I think the, the biggest thing for me moving back has just been, um, you know, finding people to relate to, um, finding people who are willing to get to know who I am now. I had such a, mm. I realized I had such a presence when I was younger that was not really known to me. And um, it's really important to me when someone reaches out and wants to know who I am now, what am I, what am I doing now, and not the 18 year old that had stars in her eyes. Oh, oh you sound so familiar to a person who walked, who's probably your age, but she walked a totally different path mm -hmm. than you. She's a three tour combat veteran. Sure. And she talks about after years in the, a few years in the military, coming back here and just trying to find your place here because yeah. your world experience has changed so much. You don't think you're better. She doesn't think she's better, mm -hmm. but trying to find the, yep. re the readjustment because people are still thinking of you as the way they knew me and, the, and so now yeah. you're in but your you know your world experience has kind of changed you a bit yes definitely changed me i mean i think not for no better yeah, for good yeah. yeah i mean i i i'm i think that um I, i'm definitely a different person than i was when i lived here and it's funny because it's like you know when i sit with these 16 17 year old kids i think you know, how can you know when you're 16 and 17 what you want to do? But the response I get, especially when I'm in the high school, from the teachers that are still there and that knew me, they say, well, you were never going to do anything else. Like, you were going to New York, New York no matter what. And I'm glad that I had the opportunity to know that I could set my dream and set my mind on something and actually work in it. You know, a big thing for me was when I was younger and we would go to New York, I would always wait at the stage door because I just wanted to be friends with the people that I was watching sing and dance. Like, I wanted them to be my circle. And um, as I spent more time in New York, you know, my circle was people that were on Broadway and that mm -hmm. were performers and, and set designers. And a very good friend of mine is what you call a star dresser. She dresses the stars backstage. And I was waiting for um, two friends who were working on the show Motown and we were standing at the stage door and this was about six months before I left and you know people were like looking at us because we were getting ready to go in the stage door to meet them and leave and I had a moment where I got pretty emotional because I had achieved what I wanted to do I wanted to immerse myself in that business mm. and that culture and I wanted it to be a positive experience and it was and at the end of the day, I feel like I packed like 60 years of a career into 12 years. I feel like I've been given a whole new life mm -hmm. and a whole new chance to, you know, explore a different career and really be myself, but a more, you know, I guess intelligent adult version of myself back in mm -hmm. my hometown. How many people get that opportunity right. Right. to live in a, a place they love twice? Yeah. You know, I mean, I feel like I like won the lottery. Right. So again, what was the ultimate reason to move back, though? Sure. I so I went, like I said, I went back to school at 26, and I went to school full time and worked full time for the for Camp Broadway, which is a company that I went to when I was um, when I was growing up. They had summer camp, so I did both those things full time, 
and I graduated school and while I was in school everyone around me kept asking what are you going to do with your media journalism degree and my response was I knew what I wanted to do my whole life back off I'm loving producing these events like let me figure it out and school finished and I had a very busy summer I mean there were weeks where I worked 24 hours a day because I had I was in charge of performers mm -hmm. around the country so like I have a story about a banana truck flipping over that still gives me the heebie-jeebies at 3 o'clock in the morning. But my point is that I was very, very busy. And then August came and work slowed down and I wasn't going back to school. And I just, like, I woke up one day and I was like, I don't see a future for myself here anymore. It happened so quickly. Mm -hmm. I think that it had maybe been building up over the years. Like, I didn't love the subway. It's a really expensive place to live. Um, socially, it's isolating. I felt like most of my relationships existed with people on Facebook mm. because if my friends were on Broadway, they worked at night and I mm. worked during the day. It was really hard to meet people to date because everyone's running around mm. and trying to find the next most exciting thing. And the community that I had hoped after 12 years I would have built was so scattered. Mm. I, I would feel like on a Friday night, if you didn't book somebody two months in advance, you weren't oh. hanging out with them. And you know the one thing, you know, uh, the, what I tell people about the people of this area is we like to play together, we like to work together, mm -hmm. we occasionally like to fight together. <laughs> and, but it's amazing, no matter what, even some of the people you don't even think like you, when something ha tragic happens in your life, everybody's there. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how, in, and you know, I think the one thing that is really, another thing that's good about this area is, I don't think we're good at putting on airs. No. I think you are who you are. Mm -hmm. And you know, I know I'm that way and I think a lot of people are. And I think we have, and I think another thing is we have a very good BS meter. Mm -hmm. is if we know, we kind of know when somebody's BSing us, so you might as well be who you are. Yeah. Uh, because some, it is gonna take long for people to catch on. Yeah, and I would agree that for me in New York, I think, you know, there was a way that I could have um, sort of played into that business a little more, like, and networked a little differently. I mean, I did a great job, but socially, I didn't want to live the lifestyle that went along with the entertainment business. Right. I didn't want to go out to a concert at 11 o'clock at night. Um, I didn't want to be like running around town to everybody's different cabarets after the theater. You know, I, I started craving, and I mentioned earlier, you know, my values started changing. I, I was a homebody. And on the weekend, if I wanted to stay home, I didn't want to feel like, you know, the kids these days say FOMO, fear of missing out. Mm. I didn't like that feeling that just because I lived in New York City, I was having this, I was missing out on life. Mm. I wanted, I love here. You know, people will say to me, oh, what do you do after eight o'clock at night? Like, well, I'm already home at six. So at eight o'clock at night, I'm going to sleep, yeah. you know? That's what I wanted. And so I think that growing up here and having been raised here by, by two people that love being here and knew what it was like to live other places, mm. I really sort of, you know, craved that comfort that comes from here that I just learned when I was growing up and and I started that fall scene increasingly unhappy and then the real kicker is I had decided that I was going to move and I was going to take this job in Montana and then you know I needed to tell my job that I was leaving and um, I needed to get out of my lease because a lease in Manhattan is like a serious business and I went to Boston for the weekend uh, just to sort of make my decision and meet with my dad there and I came back on a Monday in the beginning of November and my landlord called to tell me the apartment I was renting sold and I had to move. Yeah, perfect timing. And I just knew it was time to go. Okay, Sonny, uh, we only have a couple more minutes left. Mm -hmm. If you, ha what are some words, especially to young people that you might want to offer them? Just, you know, just about opportunities, about dreams, anything. Sure. Um, I would tell them that they should definitely dream big um, and that includes educating themselves on whatever career they want to go into. So if it's theater like I went into, you know, you want to do your research for your area and then get out of your area and see what else is in the world. You know, had I not gone to New York City at 12, I wouldn't have known that that was some place that I wanted to spend over 10 years of my life. And I also think that the thing that I really wish that I had known years ago, but hindsight is 2020, 
is that it's okay to change your mind and it's okay to do things that you said you'd never do as mm -hmm. long as when you get up every day you're happy to wake up and the people that you surround yourself with are people that you want to be with you shouldn't be afraid to change your mind because you're scared of what people think I uh, I think you're probably a lot like me every day I wake up I can't wait to work mm -hmm. I because my work is my life mm -hmm. it, um, are you like that I am again I wasn't for a little while there were when I first moved to New York, I loved it and I was so excited, but there were a couple of years in there where I wasn't excited to get up and go to work every day and that was when I realized I needed to make a change. But now I feel like I'm on a paid vacation and don't tell my boss that. <laughs> and I'm just I'm so grateful. I really I really the, my sense of gratitude over the past year has changed. Um, I get to work with one of my best friends. Um, I just want to say Laura Lawson played Annie in the first production of Annie I was in with Derby Sock Company and she's my partner at work now and as I foray into this new world of human services she's guiding me just like she did when she played Annie hmm. and um, it's just do you guys both remember your parts oh yes do we do <laughs> yeah 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 um, so it's just things like that that you I've never was able to find before and I don't want to speak ill of my time in New York because I have memories forever. I have great stories. I watch a movie and I see somebody that was my neighbor. I turn on the TV and I see one of my friends. We were watching Law & Order last week and I saw this guy that I used to hang out with and thought like, should I text him and say congratulations, you know? I've got stories forever. But now what I want to have are stories with people I'm going to be friends with forever, right? I want to be like 60 years old at the east side, you know, <laughs> talking about Christmas 2015 with my friends. So. Right. Okay, thanks for coming on. And Thank I, you so much. And because, I, as I said, I think it's so important for uh, the people of this region, or for the people of any region, to be able to realize that it's okay to dream, it's okay to follow mm -hmm. your dreams, and as you said, uh, it's okay to change yep. course because neither one of us would be doing what we were doing today if we went the straight and narrow. Exactly. Okay. Thank Thanks you for coming so much. on. And thank you to the viewers for tuning in to another segment of the Northeast Kingdom Voice.